Baby, I got the booty. I got the booty. My mama done blessed me with booty, okay? When the good Lord was giving out ass, he did not skip me not once, okay? I got the booty. channel you guys this is Neff on FTV and I am back with another video welcome back to my channel you guys this is Neff on FTV and I am back with another video as you guys can see I am currently doing my makeup so you guys already know we're gonna do a get ready with me chit chat edition now I'm not going anywhere I'm serious I'm just gonna go hang out with my sissy so um makeup is going to be very basic very simple, natural, everyday look. But um, I just wanted to do a chit chat get ready with me because I haven't done one in so long. And I was like, why not? Um, I could do it for Vlogmas, perfect time to do it for Vlogmas. And um, you know, so we can get to some things, girl. So I already started my eyebrows and kind of sort of my eye, my eye um, lids. I just primed them. But nothing major. So let's go ahead and get started, you guys. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish my eyelids. I'm going to be using my Nude Bliss palette by, I don't know who, honestly. Oh, Profusion. Profusion Cosmetics. I got it at Walmart, you guys. I seen it and I was like, I need a new palette. So I got it. First and foremost, let me start off by saying happy holidays and... Happy Thanksgiving, even though it passed already. Merry Christmas, even though it's not here yet. And Happy New Year. All of that. So, happy holidays, first and foremost. So, we're just going to jump right into things, girl. We're just going right, to jump right into things. So, my first topic that I wanted to talk about is, you guys know it's cuddle season. And, um... Just in case you live under a rock and you don't know what cuddle season is. It's basically, you know, time of season where you're supposed to be cuddled up with your boo thing. And I do know that, unfortunately, right now, um, I'm very much single. Very much single. I'm talking about, like, phone dry and all single. Now, um... Best believe if I wanted somebody to hit my line, my line would have been tapped. Period. It's by choice, not force. But you know, they they're not really talking about anything. And I'm sorry to say, but I just got to a point. I just got to a point in my life, in an age in my life where I just feel like I don't have time. I don't have time to waste. Um, what are we doing? What are we doing? Because I don't have time for casual dating. I don't have time for hookups. I don't have time for um, talking like I'm grown. I don't have time for it. So with that being said, I just feel like if you're not dating because you want, if you're not dating because you see a future with me, then there's no point of dating. Like, we're not 17 anymore. We're not, you know, just having fun anymore. Like, come on, like, let's put, let's put some pep in our steps and let's do what we gotta do. Because I'm not a spring chicken. So, I kinda am though. <laughs> I kinda am. I'm making it seem like I'm over here like 55 or something. Not that I'm saying 55 years old or anything, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I I don't worry about like having kids. Like that's not in my mind. Like oh my god, my biological clock is ticking. I need to start a family. I need to get married. Like that is just not in my mind at all, honestly. Because I feel like that will come in due time. And I so I don't want to be those type of people who are in a marriage just for the sake of the kids. 
just for the sake of the bills, just for the sake of whatever it is, instead of being happy with your partner or wanting to be with your partner. Of course, I know, like, you know, you guys go through stuff, so it's not every day <laughs> you guys are happy. It's marriage is like an emotional roller coaster, and it's like there's ups and then there's downs i get that but at the end of the day you're with that person because you genuinely want to you care about them you love them and you want to be with them and i feel like there's a lot of very unhappy marriages you know so i just don't want to be just another unhappy marriage so i am willing to take my time now back to the cuddling season uh right now there is no cuddling season for me there is nobody there is no bringing nobody home for the holidays none of that and i just want to say like the truth behind being single because people tend to like gas it up and make it seem like oh my god i just be living my best life when i'm single i'm talking to tim tom um derek all of that just talking to all these they're just talking to everybody and they're having a good time they're going on several dates they're getting flown out they're getting like five star dinners and it just makes it seem like oh they're just living their best single life and can that be a possibility absolutely for sure it could be a possibility but is that realistic mm, i don't know <laughs> that's not like all the time realistic though because you got to think about it like majority of single people is not living that type of life for real for real so the truth behind it well let me say this there's two types of singles there's two types of singles there's two types of singles there's one single that is forced she wants to be in a relationship badly and she's just haven't found somebody who wants to be in a relationship with her or with him and they're looking they're actively looking they want it they they're just i want to say desperate for it but in a sense they they're like they're eager for it they really want it right and then there is um uh, the single who is shingle <laughs> is single by choice who knows her worth has standards know what she wants and is not willing to settle now i am she she is me so with that being said um being like the truth behind being single is like it's good and it's bad it's good or bad it's bad because let me start off with the bad the bad is because like i feel like being single is, you know, it gets very lonely. It gets very lonely, especially if everybody around you is in a relationship and you're probably the one out of the two single or the only single one. So it's like, damn, everybody booed up on Christmas. Everybody bring somebody home. Everybody going out on dates. You know, you calling your girl like, let's go do this. She's like, oh, you know, um, Tim already made reservations to dinner and da, 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 da. so you stuck being at home or you stuck going out by yourself which is fine but it's not as fun if your homegirl came with you so um you know you it is very boring it is very much so boring and it gets lonely um but I feel like majority of being single is the time that you're supposed to use to better yourself whether that's financially whether that's emotionally whether that is physically like that is the time in your life where you're supposed to like folk not focus on um that other individual or focus on a romantic partner but more so focus on yourself that's the time where you're supposed to get to know yourself. That's the time where you're supposed to fall in love with yourself. That's the time where you're supposed to set standards for yourself. That's the time where you're supposed to enjoy your own company. Um, that's the time where you, like I said, you just have to better yourself. And if that's financially, working on getting a better job, working on getting a better um, skills to get a better job, opening up your business that you've been talking about, 
or um, going for that opportunity that you were always scared to making that move for that opportunity like it's, it's so much to it and like if it's a physical that you got to step your, your game up you know actually going to the gym being consistent working out doing what you got to do emotionally loving yourself better um loving other people better being more affectionate or like you know whatever you feel like you have to work on in order to make yourself better or you could also work on ways to make your next relationship better if it is your fault if you do tend to be a cheater and you know most people you go for want to be in a monogamous monogamous relationship so um you have to work on your loyalty <laughs> you know what i mean so it's just a it's just a time where you're supposed to like better yourself basically and um that's the good part about it that's that's the really good part about it and do i feel like most people take that time to do that no i feel like most people just get in one relationship and right to the next or they get out of one relationship and they're single for a little bit they don't go through the steps the process to heal and then they just go to another one and then the cycle just continuously repeats itself so no i do not feel like most people do it so with that being said i just feel like um the truth about being single is it's good and it's bad and i know like around the holidays y'all it could really get really really hard because um it's the holidays like everybody together families together people are meeting um the other person's partners and it's, it's supposed to be a fun time you know like do you guys feel like there's a difference between knowing your worth and standards because i don't i think they're all the same i feel like once you know your worth you set your standards according to because if you do not know your worth how do you know your standards because then if you don't know your worth, your standards become more physical than anything. If you don't know your worth, it becomes like, oh, I just want to do who's, who's, who's like at least 6'11", who is a light-skinned man with dress. It becomes very physical and, um, um, what's that word I'm looking for? Very, um very to the surface like i don't know the word i'm trying to think of right now but it just becomes like not really superficial because i mean like it's fake but it becomes very bland like that's the closest i could think to it it just comes like there's no substance to what you really want and what your standards is it's just like it's physical it's it's um it's basic like oh he gotta be funny there's a lot of funny toxic men out here be more specific you know which also go back to well not go back to which also brings my point of like, how do you guys feel about like manifesting do you is it is it y'all thing is it something that y'all do y'all plan to do because like i said in my last chit chat get ready with me it's still pretty new to me it's still pretty new to me. It's still, it's still something that I am, like, figuring out how to do and, you know, working on. But, like, I do catch myself manifesting the man that I want. Speaking it into life. Speaking it into existence. And um, praying for that man. Even though I don't know who he is, where he is, or what he's doing. But just praying for that individual you know what I mean? Because I feel like it's important to do that. I feel like people just tend to jump into a relationship for two reasons. For the sake to say that they are in one. And also, like, sometimes if they don't know their worth, they think that that's what they want. Like, to the touch, that's what they want. But for their soul, for, the, for their healing, for their growth... Um, it's not who they want. It's not what they want. You know what I mean? I just, I want more than just the bare minimum. And I just refuse to, like, settle for that. And, I mean, like, am I asking for too much, ladies? Like, am I, am I doing too much? Come on. And also... 
Now, this just came to my mind right now. <clears throat> How do y'all feel about this thing that I've been going around of what do you bring to the table? That question. Please, not all at once. Don't all answer at once. <laughs> but no, really, what do y'all feel about this? Like, personally, for real, for real, I hate it. I do not want to be asked that question. I do not want to be asked that question. I will not answer that question. And I feel like that question is bogus. Okay. And let me explain a little bit why. I'm not even going to get too much into it because I already know it's a sensitive topic and people feel so many different ways about it. So I'm not even going to get too much into it nor do I have to explain myself. <laughs> but I just feel like men who ask that question, what do you bring to the table? I feel like nine times out of ten don't care what you bring to the table because I've never seen anybody that I know personally face to face say okay anybody who is married let me say to say like um oh yeah when I first met my husband he asked me what do I bring to the table if never in real life and I tend to talk a lot about marriage with people, with people who are married because, like, I'm a young single girl out here and I'm trying to find, you know, the one for me. So, I do question a lot about marriages and um, I try to understand it well. I, I know that you could never prepare yourself truly for marriage because at the end of the day, everybody's relationship is different. But I do like to have some type of insight, you know. And I've never heard in my life a man who is, like, really committed really interested and be like you know what yeah he asked me on our first date what did i bring to the table or he asked me during some time in our relationship or getting to know each other stage what do i bring to the table like i've never in my life met somebody in real life who were serious about each other who actually got married said yeah my husband wanted to know that like i just i don't know like what is wrong with this generation of men i don't get it and then the second part is whatever you bring to the table they find some way to dismiss it you can say you cook that's fine i could get my meals delivered from um whole foods on amazon i clean i could get a cleaning lady i fuck good you're not the only one good So what do you, like, come on now, like, what is it? Whatever you bring to the table, they find some type of way to dismiss it. You could be like, oh, I am a very caring person. Um, I make sure my house is a home. I can get my furniture delivered. I get this, I get that. I can do Everything you bring to the table, y'all, they find some type of way to dismiss it and make it seem like it's not important. They could find it somewhere else. So what else do you have? So what's the point of answering the question? And also, another reason I feel like that's not an important question because at the end of the day, somebody could tell you whatever they want to tell you. Somebody could gas your head up and tell you, oh, I cook five-star meals, I fuck good, I do handstands on it, and I just be doing all types of tricks, so I'm this, I'm that, I'm everything that you possibly would want in a woman or in another person, they could gas you up and tell you all that. And then once you actually get into a relationship with that person, they're nothing like they said they were. I don't got time. I don't got time. Like, why would I do that? Just try to justify myself to be in a relationship with you. Try to make, try to basically convince you to be in a relationship with me. I feel like in due time, you're gonna see the type of woman that I am. In due time, I'm good. You're gonna know whether I'm your cup of tea or not. It takes time and actions to realize whether the person is meant for you or not. Because like I said before, I could gas you up. I could tell you anything that I want to tell you at the end of the day. And I could pretend to be that person for the first three, six months. Later on, time will reveal itself that I am not that person. I am not that person that I pretended to be, or I said that I was. We're talking, we're getting to know each other. This is the first 90 days, baby. Like this is a trial, this is a trial. I might not be your cup of tea by the end of the 90 days. 
we're just gonna move on so what i'm gonna do just answer that question every time i meet somebody else right no let's move on to something more positive <laughs> well it was positive too i do know like right now y'all basically we're gonna talk about staying positive staying positive during during hard times and um i know right now like for real for real a lot of people are going through hard times i know personally like people that i know is going through hard times right now myself included so it's just like it's 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 a hard time right we got this pandemic that just won't leave us alone it just won't budge um employment is getting very difficult because everybody's being required well not everybody but most jobs are requiring vaccination and there's still some people who you know would prefer not to get it and um so it's like minimizing the options that they have as to where they can and cannot work or if whether or not they would even have a job um so it is like hard times for everybody and it's this different type of hard hardship out here for everybody and staying positive during it i think is a very important topic to speak about um for me personally what keeps what keeps me going is my faith my faith um my faith is like very important to me reading the bible praying and um listening to gospel music that helps me stay positive a lot and also surrounding yourself with good people um i have um i have my sister who um, I tend to speak to a lot about my issues. <laughs> and I have a cousin who I'm very close with and I also talk to her about my issues a lot. So surrounding herself with positive people, my faith, and um, also reminding yourself, yourself too, I should say that yourself. Also reminding yourself that um, this too shall pass. And it will not last. Like, hard times do not last. Although when you're in the midst of it, it does seem like it's forever. And you don't know how you're going to get out of it. It's like you're in a dark place. And sometimes you even feel like nobody understands what you're going through. Um, but you, what helps me also is, like, thinking back, like, every situation that I thought I wouldn't get out of, I got out of. And I'm better bigger and better because of it so just got to keep reminding yourself even on days where like i don't see how i'm gonna get out of it or i don't have much hope i literally tell myself like you know what this will not last or um it'll get greater later or um i'm gonna have a good day like i just refuse to let people or things or situations ruin my peace that's that is my ultimate goal is peace 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 and i just will not put myself in a situation where i allow a person or a situation to get in the way of that so i just wake up and although it's like everything is burning around me and i feel like i'm just drowning in my own stress i just be like you know what i'm gonna have a good day i'm gonna have a good day because i cannot change what's going on at least i haven't found a solution yet um or it's I'm just waiting on whatever to happen in order for me to see what's my next move. I just tell myself, I'm going to make it a good day for myself. And a good day for myself, y'all, it doesn't necessarily be, have to be like my usual good days. A good day for myself that I make for myself could be like I get my favorite food from my favorite restaurant. Or like I go spend some time with one of, one of the people that keeps me going, that encourages me. Or um, I get some me time or I just do something that I want to do. That's what I mean when I say I make myself have a good day. Because at least if I get to do one thing that makes me happy, it was a good day for me. I just have to like remind myself like, you know, you that girl. Stop playing with yourself. You really that girl. So now I'm going to move on to my MAC foundation. And the color NW53. Um, I know I've been talking a lot. Sorry. Next topic is how is YouTube life? 
Now, um, and then as you guys know, I also go in with my 360 Mocha from Fit Me, from Maybelline, Maybelline Fit Me. This is the most consistent that I've ever been on YouTube, you guys. So, um, if you guys are not new, then you guys would know that um, I started my YouTube um, channel a while ago. And I started it for the wrong reasons, and I did share that before. And one of my chit-chats, I was just, I thought it was a quick book. I ain't gonna hold you. Um, so, I had started it for that reason. And I soon learned that it wasn't a quick book. It's um, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of dedication, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of effort, and all, honestly, y'all, it's it's money spent. You have to have money to make money. That's just how it is. So, um, I had stopped, and I didn't. Oh, y'all, let me make sure I get my neck. And then um, I came back. Now. I came back and um, this is the most consistent that I've ever been on YouTube and I just want to speak on like how it's going so um, it does take a lot of time for those who are interested in starting YouTubes um, who's thinking about it it takes time to build the audience especially if you're going through it how I am um, I don't I don't have a heavy background like I don't have a heavy following that's coming from a, a different platform like my um, I'm not Instagram famous I'm not TikTok famous I'm like just a regular degular person um, that you know works not five or whatever so um, because I don't have a huge platform following me I didn't automatically come here with at least 2,000 4,000 followers like or subscribers I literally have to build that on myself um, by myself the advice that I would give is be genuine be yourself don't try to pretend to be anybody else because people will catch on to that and um, they just won't fuck with you like at the end of the day when people catch on to that, they start realizing, oh, you trying to be like this person, or you trying to do this, you trying to do that. Like, people would just, like, dog you out and not like you. And then you just, you know, you become that girl that nobody want to deal with, it, basically. So, be, your, be yourself. And also, for me, the journey's going, like, pretty well. I like it. I've always... I've always liked the idea of doing YouTube, always. Um, now the vlogging, the vlogging is something that I love. I love sharing my day, my week with you guys. It's like, it's fun to me. And you guys love it too because that is one of the best, like, that's my niche because you guys made it my niche. I thought I was going to come on this platform mostly for beauty and fashion. But it seemed like you guys are rocking with the, with the vlogs more and I'm cool with that. Cause I like it too. <laughs> um, I really do enjoy vlogging. I really enjoy sharing my week with you guys and what I do and stuff like that. It's it's really fun for me too. I love vlogging. I love doing the edits. Um, and then it also makes me adventurous. Like it makes me want to try new things so I could vlog about it or talk about it in my videos. And um, it forces me to not be so like antisocial because if you know me, I am an introvert. And um, I love my me times. And if it was up to me, I'll probably stay in the house all day, most of the time, and not do nothing. But because you know, I be trying to vlog and trying to find stuff to keep you guys entertained and keep myself entertained too, to be honest. Um, so it does force me to be like, you know, more, um, more of a um, outgoing person. I know my page kind of look like. A family page right now because I do a lot of activities with my family but that's it's not a family page I just want to make that clear it's very much my page it's very much my YouTube channel but the reason why I have my family in there a lot is because like I spend a lot of time with my family we do a lot of things together um, I haven't had the best luck with friends and um, 
people just be grimy and nasty and just do all type of stuff not that i'm saying like family can't do the same but it's it's like i rather deal with my family i rather deal with my family bs than go deal with somebody else outside bs but at the end of the day i'm trying not to deal with nobody's bs honestly and the friends like the very small people that i consider my friend they're like busy they have lives they you know go to school they work they're very busy people so i don't hang out with them too often and when i do hang out with them i'm kind of in the moment and i don't end up vlogging or something you know but so far um youtube's treating me well i don't got no hate no hate messages no hate comments um it people you know people are nice to me on youtube so far so it's going pretty well for me i can't complain i can't complain i can't complain i'm very excited about this journey i can't wait to see where it brings me i'm excited about it yeah so anybody who is thinking about doing the youtube and you're not sure about it do it do it girl do it 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 i'll say do it 10 out of 10 will recommend if anybody's wondering like can you can you work a nine to five and still do youtube because like, usually you can't get paid right away so you, you just can't leave a nine to five and saying that you're going to be a full-time youtuber unless you got it like that unless you got somebody that's willing to support you financially or you saved up enough money to support yourself financially or you found yourself in some type of situation that's that enables you to just do that baby more power to you but for the majority of people it's just not realistic um as you guys know i work i don't work a nine to five i do um 12 hour shifts um i do work in the medical field and i work 12 hour shifts so um speaking from experience it is very much possible to um to work a nine to five and um do youtube it's hard i'm not gonna cap it's it's hard um but it is doable and if it was easy everybody would be doing it that's how you gotta think about it if it was easy everybody would be doing it if it was easy everybody would have just like been on here making money you know so it it definitely takes some dedication it takes some um it takes time you got to figure out do you really want this because and that's for everything though it goes for everything like anything that you're trying to do you got to figure out do you really want it because even when with me with my business i put more money in than i receive you know what i mean but that's what i want i want to be a businesswoman a business person so um i want to own several successful businesses so whenever i'm just spending my money i just be telling myself like you gotta do what you gotta do that's what comes with it <laughs> you know and another subject that I want to talk about was um, BBLs. Now, I feel like BBLs is getting very popular. Well, it's been popular. It's not going nowhere. I don't think BBLs are going anywhere. But um, I feel like it's getting more popular now. And like even younger like girls be 18. They be they be fresh. I'm talking about like just turned 18 two days ago and already got their BBLs booked and ready. Okay. So with that being said, what do I think about BBLs? What do you think about BBLs? What do we think about BBLs? For me, myself, personally, I don't care what people do with their bodies. Not at all. Don't care, baby. If you want to go and get your body done, you want to get BBLs, you want to do it. You want to get your titties lifted. You want to get your titties done. You want to do this or that. Baby, more power to you. Do what you want to do. I'm not going to stop you. You know what I mean? For me personally, you know, I'm talking about for myself. Would I ever get a BBL? What y'all think? Before I even answer that, what y'all think? Pause it. What y'all think? Y'all think I look like the type of girl that will get a BBL? Do I like being with what, what Karish said? You think I'll be with a man that beat me up? <laughs> for real, you... I don't like the type of girl that could be me. What y'all think? Yes or no? Honestly, no. I don't see myself getting a BBL. Um, for many reasons. Because one, um, 
the side effects scared shit out of me. I work in that medical field, baby, and I don't even plan on that. You see all type of stuff working in the medical field. And the places I work, oh my God, I've seen it. I don't, I'm not going to say I've seen it all because I have not seen it all. But I've seen the majority of it, baby. I've seen a lot. And I don't even play like that. I don't play those type of games. I don't even put myself in these type of situations to even, like, no. Um, so working from a medical field perspective, I'm too scared. No. The risk factors. And it's just too much. And do, did you guys know that a BBL is more dangerous than a heart, um, than heart surgery? Cause who? Um, and also like, I feel like I'm building my brand on self love and, um, self awareness and natural stuff, natural, um, solutions. That I feel like a BBL wouldn't fit my, my brand and who I am as a person. Um, I feel like how do how do I build myself around telling girls they're pretty just the way that they are, but I go get my body done. I go get a BBL. How that work? The math is not math. Thing. So I feel like it probably wouldn't fit me. Um, but no shade to people who got BBLs. Let me tell you, like, honestly, I be looking at some of the girls who have BBLs. Most of the, the YouTubers, like, some, some of these celebrities, like, these higher celebrities, their bodies just look weird to me. Because you could obviously tell it's fake. So I'm not talking about the very, like, high celebrities. I'm talking about mostly girls who I see from YouTube that be getting their body done or, like, who's, um, IG famous. Those type of girls, when I see their bodies, I be like, girl... Who, who's your surgeon? But y'all know that once they talk, they'll be like. <laughs> Honestly, when I be seeing some of these girls that be getting their body done, and I'll just be like, wow, like, nah, if you sure you don't want to be here? And plus, honestly, getting, getting the butt is not my problem. Baby, I got the booty. I got the booty. My mama done blessed me with booty, okay? When the good Lord was giving out, ass he did not skip me not once okay i got the booty the stomach though the stomach though yeah no now i ain't gonna cap with y'all i ain't gonna cap with y'all i probably would do body sculpting i would do non-invasive um body work i'm not gonna cap what you want me to say? I'm not lying to y'all. Not gonna hold you. Because, and if I do end up doing that, y'all, honestly, if I do end up doing that, I would tell you guys. Because like I said, I'm building my brand on being very honest and self-love. I would, um, I would be honest about it. I would explain why I'm, I chose to do it. I would share the process and the procedures and the, you know, behind the scenes of it. I would do that. I would never just go get in and come back and be like, damn, I've been really working out. Mm. You see the stomach? Gone. Like, I would never do that. Pretend that I've been out here eating healthy and working out five times a week. Like, I would never do it like that. So, a conversation that me and my cousin um been talking about lately. Me and my cousin talk about the most randomest things. Like, you guys wouldn't understand. Like, whatever thought question come up, whatever thought or question that comes into my mind, I used to say to my cousin, like, girl, how about if, or would you ever, or how do you feel about... All the time. All the time. So, we were talking about, like, how do y'all feel about y'all men posting y'all? Or you posting your men? Like, when does it become secrecy? When does privacy become secrecy? Hurry. <laughs> what is too much sharing? Like, what is too much? Hmm? So at first I was so against it. I was like, you know what? No, actually, when I was younger, when I was younger, I was like, my man better post me, my face, and everything else. He better put me on there every day. Like, da, 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 da. but that was when I was like 16, 17. I ain't know me no better. So I was, you know, saying all that. And then when I got older, I was like, mm, don't post me at all. I went from posting me every day to posting, don't post me at all. So now I'm kind of like torn. I'm kind of torn, y'all. Cause I feel like, okay, 
you can post me once in a while. Once we get serious though, not, not during our talking stage, not during our talking stage, not doing our talking stage. Let us, let us, you know, get to know each other. Let us build a friendship, a relationship, you know, yada, yada, yada. And then once we, you know, we locked in, then and only then, okay, we can start posting each other or whatever. So when we do get to that stage of posting each other, like I feel like one side of me feel like I don't mind. He could post me once in a while. Like I don't expect him to post me every single day. Um, posting once in a while, blah, blah, blah. or like we going out, like right now, I'm doing my makeup, and he feel like, damn, you know, you look real, you look extra pretty today, and he just decides to record me, post me, I don't mind, you know what I mean, or like, he bought me some stuff, he posts what he bought me, like, that's cute, or he did a romantic gesture, and he decided to record the process, like, that's fine, I get that, but now side of me feel like, I don't want you to post me or I'm not going to post you until we're married. Until it's official on paper. I don't know. I don't know. What y'all think? People who's in a relationship tap in. I know for sure that I don't want to build my my career on, on a man. Like I don't want to build like a YouTube couple channel. I don't want to like, I honestly, I don't even want to like vlog with my man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I want to keep my, like, relationship private. Like, I don't even think I would want to vlog with him or anything like that. Like, it, this may change, y'all. I might be just talking off the ass right now. But I'm just saying for right now, that's how I feel. Like, I feel like I wouldn't even want to vlog with him or put him in my YouTube channels or do, like, a couple Q&A and things like that. Like, I, I don't want to do that. I have no desires to do stuff like that. And I do know that everything is different for everybody like what may work for one relationship may not work for you like somebody who's in a relationship she probably post that man every single day when she wake up and it works for them you know they're the happiest they ever been they love each other they're very happy and they don't mind that's what they do and somebody else could have a man and she don't post at all not once and they're fine with that they're they're the happiest they've ever been whatever works for your relationship i don't know like look at um Issa Rae. she didn't post her man until they were married and i thought i thought that was such a boss move i was like damn girl go ahead with your last song like i just loved it i love that for her i love that for her so it's like i don't know i don't know y'all but yeah, you guys, um, that's it that I'm going to talk about for today. I did have a lot of topics, and I know I spent, like, more time in one topic than the other. I had a lot of topics, and my face is basically done right now. Um, I just have to, I just have to, um, put my MAC powder. But, um, yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and go get dressed. And then I'll check back in with you guys just to show you guys the final look. And I also will be vlogging. So yeah, I'll check back in with you guys later. Okay, you guys. So this is the final look for the makeup. Um, now, I I forgot to record before I left. I just put clothes on and I left. And I had to go because um, the mall was closing in about an hour and a half. So I had to go. But this is me back home. Um, I'm coming back to show you guys the final look. This is my makeup. Like I said, very basic, but very cute. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted, baby. But, um, yeah, so this is the final makeup look. Um, this is after me coming home about two hours. No, four hours later. Four hours later, I had my mask on and everything, and this is the final look. Hmm. Still cute, still that girl. But yeah, so this is the final look. Um, thank you so much for watching and being my Get Ready With Me Chit Chat Edition. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed talking to you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the topics that I was talking about. And if you guys have any other ideas, as far as topics for me to talk about, please don't, don't hesitate. Just drop them in the comment section. And I got you next time. Sure. I really hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Um, yeah, so just let me know if you guys have any other topic that you would want me to talk about. 
and yeah i'll see you guys on the next get ready with me chit chat edition love you guys of course <laughs>